Welcome to the Awesome Marriage Podcast, a place for honest conversations about marriage and practical advice on how to build an awesome marriage. I am your co-host, Christina Dodson. On the show will be our host, Dr. Kim Kimberling. Dr. Kim is a marriage counselor and has been married for over 50 years. His passion is to help you strengthen your most intimate relationship. Today we are talking about perseverance. The thing about building an awesome marriage is you're never done. It's not a house that gets built and then you can just live in it. You have to keep the walls up. You have to keep pouring the foundation. It gets a lot easier with time, but you cannot coast. So how do we keep that perseverance? That's what we're going to discuss today. If you're new to the show, we drop a new episode every Tuesday. And on the last Tuesday of every month, it's a special guest interview. If you could, go ahead and hit subscribe so that you can join us each and every Tuesday. So, Dr. Kim, why is coasting in marriage not an option? What happens when we try to coast? I guess one of my new, I guess, kind of mantras is that your marriage never stands still. It's either moving forwards or backwards. It really doesn't stand still. So things that happen each day, words that are said, how are those affecting my marriage, all those kind of things. And so I think a lot of times we, we know we need to work our marriage, and so we do, and, and it gets to a good place. And then we think, okay, we've made it. And, and maybe it's gradual, but you will slide backwards. You just have to continue to be intentional every day. I think that's why people have loved our one thing, emails and text, is because it gives them something, it helps them focus one time a day, Monday through Friday, on their marriage. And just that focus and saying, I'm going to tell my spouse I love them 10 times a day, or I'm going to ask them how I can help them. Those kind of things keep you moving forward. You can't coast. It just doesn't work. I wish it could. I thought early in marriage, I'm going to nail it, which I didn't. But my thought was going into marriage, I'm going to nail it for the first few years. And then we got it made. Well, life changes situations changes all those kind of the world changes and so you have to constantly adapt and so if you're going to continue to move your marriage so that when you do reach older age or whatever that you guys are just so thankful for what you've had what you've worked through and you're enjoying that and so don't coast you just can't do it and i know that's hard because i think a lot of times in our in our world that's what we want to do you know and and i don't know why i mean i think sometimes guys realize okay i'm gonna if my business gonna be successful I'm going to have to work hard the whole time. If I'm going to continue to be the physician or the mechanic or whatever I am, I'm going to have to continue to learn and update and find out about new things and new ways to do things. And for some reason, the most important thing in our life, but next to Christ, we look at it different. Well, yeah, I got it. So here we go. No, you got to keep working on it. Yeah, definitely. And even like with our bodies, it's not like we can like achieve health status and stay there. It's like, well, you got to right. keep e- eating salads and taking care of your body. <laughs> like, you, It's not like, oh, I've had, en- I've had enough vegetables for my life. Now I'm good. Like Dylan would love that if that was the case. If was like, he could like meet a quota and then be done <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> eating exactly. vegetables for the rest of his life. But that's not the way life works. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking in, in heaven that uh, broccoli will taste like chocolate. And, oh. you know, I'm thinking we'll have some, some, re- some redeemable things. Yes, that will happen. Yeah. Yes, that is exciting. Something to look forward to. Yes. Well, well, what happens to you and Nancy in particular when you stop investing in your marriage? What habits do you tend to slip into? I think initially to the exam, most of us know what um, love languages are. Most of them know, must know what ours are and, and what our spouses are. And if you don't, it's easy to, to go to the, that app or online and figure that out. So Nancy's a quality time in words for me. And when we don't do those, we feel disconnected, especially Nancy with the, uh, I think the, the quality time is so important that, we, important that we have that really every day. Now, if we skip a day, I mean, because of circumstances, that's fine. But I see a difference in her when we do that consistently every day. And if we don't, then I, I think we just we just aren't as connected. It, it, she doesn't feel as loved on those days as the other. Words of affirmation, I mean, there's nobody I want to hear things from like that from Nancy. And so the more she does, I don't need them every day probably, but, but when something happens or I do something or I need encouragement and she says it, it makes all the difference in the world. So uh, when we don't do those, I think we, we just we kind of go apart. I think some couples you just see almost become strangers because they've just coasted. They just not, you, you learn something about your spouse every day or you can. And so um, you have to intentionally 
connect with your spouse. When Nancy and I find ourselves in that, and we'd have to say, you know, we haven't sat down and talked for a week, and we got to do that. We got to put that back into our schedule just like we did because it doesn't work. And we can yeah. slip into those things of just not doing them. And I think that's what happens. I, I see that in counseling. That's why I think sometimes I encourage couples to come to counseling a little longer that we solve the problem. But I think they need that accountability and intentionality for a little period of time and then try to encourage them after that to come in. Hey, let's do it six months and see that you continue to do that. And I think sometimes it helps to have that accountability and some goals like out, that out there because I think it is something gets in the way of you praying together in the evening. And you know how good that is for your marriage and you skip it one night and you skip another. And then all of a sudden I've had couples say, and then we just didn't start praying together again. So it makes a difference. Persevering, yeah, consistency does. makes a difference. Yeah, those habits that you have to build in and not slip out of. Yeah, I think for, for Dylan and I, one of the things that happens to us is we start to not know each other. Yeah. The problem with knowing someone is your job is never complete. Like it's not a job that you can be like, oh, aced it. Now I'm good for life uh, because we're always changing. So if I stop investing in my marriage, all of a sudden I look up and I realize Dylan has changed and I don't know him like I used to know him. And so some of the habits that we kind of slip into when we stop investing in our marriage is we stop kind of similar to you, Nancy, we stop connecting every day. So kind of having that connection where we're like having the opportunity to yeah. know, each, know each other daily and be a student of each other. Um, but the other thing that we slip into is just not really solving conflict. Hmm. So having these small issues, these small fights, these small times where we're not really kind to each other, but not keeping short enough accounts of it and not really solving the problem to where it just builds up into a bigger conflict and you add that plus not connecting every day and it's a it, it's a pretty toxic cycle yeah i like to use the picture of like a big ice block where you just tip a little piece of it and i think that's what happened you mm -hmm. didn't run the block you didn't by chipping off but if you just kind of keep chipping off every day eventually you're just gonna have a little piece left and so your marriage gets down to that doesn't look like an ice block anymore well that doesn't look mm -hmm. like the marriage we wanted or we had anymore either and so uh it's so important. We're all going to miss days. We're all going to do things or say things we we uh, wish we hadn't. The key is, do we recover from that and get back on track? That's the thing. We're not going to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. But we need that's to keep good. that in front of us all the time. Yeah, keep investing. That's yep. good. Well, what are some indicators couples can look out for that might signal that they have stopped investing and having an awesome marriage? One thing I think is so important is to ask your spouse what you can do to help them each day. If you haven't asked that for a while, you know, that, that's a slipping. Not, you were praying together. You're not praying together. You're reading new version plans together. You quit doing that. Uh, you got in the habit of not going to church and maybe even it's pretty easy to skip church online because nobody knows I wasn't there, you know, when I skip church online. And there's just something about being in our church or being in your community group that are so important. Uh, not making specific time for each other. And so when all of those things that just kind of happen and when they happen the first time, none of those are catastrophic. None of those things that I mentioned were like having an affair or something. They're little things, but they're little things that make such a difference when we do them consistently, when we persevere to do those every day. And when we don't, there's a void there. It really is. There's nothing, I, I've said this so many times, there's nothing that draws a couple closer together than praying together, however you do that. And when you quit doing that, you, you've you got a big gap there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think one other maybe indicator that I would add to that is if you stop having connected sex. So, you know, I think for a lot of couples, maybe especially Christian couples are like, well, sex is important. So we are going to do it. So they kind of have a schedule. They kind of have a routine. So they end up having sex kind of out of obligation or routine, but it doesn't feel intimate or it doesn't feel connective. Um, so if you if you feel like you're not enjoying sex or you don't feel really connected to your spouse during sex, that's a huge indicator that you've probably stopped investing in your marriage and or so, or something is wrong and, and it, your marriage needs work. Absolutely, and you don't want to let that continue because basically because you're missing out. I mean, yeah, it becomes sex for sex, like, but you, that you can have with anybody in the world. It should be so different in your marriage, and so I, yeah. And, and there's times that we all go through that. I get that. You can't have you know that connection probably every single time, but you work toward that and you do what you can to make that happen every time. Yeah, that's good. Well, how can we persevere in building an awesome marriage? What does it look like practically to keep going? Uh, ask your spouse every day how they can pray for them. 
Uh, I think that does a lot. And when you do, one thing that I love about that, that, that God has showed us is that, you know, and maybe when I'm going out the door, I'll say, hey, anything going on today I can pray for you about? And she'll tell me something. And then you see God act. And so when we talk that evening, it's like, you know what you prayed for? Well, this is what happened. And God did this. And so that is so cool. Uh, making sure you have time. We're talking a lot. I'm talking a lot about thoughts now. My thoughts for Nancy need to be positive. Not to let, okay, so she frustrates with me. Not to focus on that, to think, oh my gosh, look what, how our marriage, what she's done for me, how faithful she is. To keep those positive thoughts, that my words come out are, are positive and that, that I encourage her. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't get frustrated, but I think we have learned that when those things happen, we get over it really quick. Where we used to do some damage with our marriage because that frustration mm-hmm. can go to anger and then you end up saying or doing something you wish you shouldn't. And, you, and sometimes you couldn't even remember what started it, but you mm-hmm. remember the bad things you said to each other. So your positive words, your actions, um, all those things, and then just that motivation to keep persevering. And I think what, what you see is if you do that day after day, and you may not see a big difference tomorrow or the next day, but you will in a year or two years or five years or 10 years. By doing that, you'll say, oh, my gosh, because you'll look at the couple next door that didn't. And you'll look at you and you'll say, oh, my gosh, we're sitting on the front porch and we're holding hands and they're throwing things at each other in their backyard. You know, I mean, it may not be that extreme, but it, it just it pays off over time. It's that consistency. It's that whole thing we're talking about of being of persevering towards that awesome marriage. You do something every day that is good for your marriage. You'll never regret that. Yeah, that's good. To me, when I think of like, what does it look like to keep keeping on, you know, to keep this awesome marriage, um, it's making sure your marriage is a top priority. Mm. So to me, I think that means it should be on your calendar, it should be in your budget, it should be in your thoughts, and it should be in your prayers. If it's in those four things, your your marriage is a top priority. And one of the things that I think a lot of us don't talk about or don't uh, deal with is the budget part. Yeah. <laughs> and so like I hear all the time, I can't afford counseling. I'm like, cool, but you went out to eat last night because I saw it on Instagram. So how's that, how's that playing out for you? You can afford to go out to eat, but you can't afford counseling. Um, you can afford that hobby that you love to do that costs money, but you can't afford to go on date nights with your spouse. You can afford to do this and that, but you can't afford a babysitter so that you can get alone time with your spouse. Like those, like that's not tracking. Yep. In order to make your marriage an actual top priority, you should be able to see it on your calendar, in your budget, in your thoughts, and in your prayers. It it is, and I think that's that's so important. I think we do. We can we can rationalize so much. And I know looking and going to counseling when you first go is like, oh, and we have to deal with things, or is it going to make it worse, or all that kind of thing. But gosh, I think you'll find it if you could both go into it with the with the attitude of where you want to make our marriage better. You will come away from that with your marriage better. I want to ask you something, though, because mm-hmm. I think one of the things that happens in that is is the people struggle with them making their marriage first, just when they get kid. Now, you've, mm-hmm. you had two, you know, Finley's older, so she's a little more self-sufficient. But when you've got two or three young kids that take a lot of time, how how did you in that time when they were both maybe a couple of years ago make Dylan and your marriage a priority? Yeah, I think one real, and this was... It was easier for Dylan and I, I will say, because we were both very much on the same page about it. So it's not like we had to drag each other along. But something that was really important to us was to put each other above the kids. And so we don't have a child-centered marriage. We have like we put each other above the kids. And so and that not in a weird, abusive way where we neglect the children, but in a way where we teach our kids that mommy and daddy have to talk to each other. Mommy and daddy need time together. And so it means we were sticklers about certain things and not others. Like you can't be a stickler about everything. Thing, right? right. And so, um, but there were some things that we were sticklers about. So for instance, having a quiet time. So as soon as our kids stopped napping, we went straight to quiet time where, okay, well, you're not taking a nap anymore. So now you're going to have alone time in your room by yourself for an hour. And so, and you know, it doesn't start with an hour. You know, when you have a two-year-old, it right. starts with 15 minutes and then you keep working your way up to an hour. But our kids have always done quiet time. And so on the weekends, that means Dylan and I have an hour together on Saturday and Sunday where we could do whatever we want together. Another thing that we were a big stickler about is bedtime. It is not a knockout, drag out, huge routine. It doesn't take us an hour to put our kids to bed. It takes us 10 minutes and five if we divide and conquer uh, because we've never made it this whole thing where we read 10 books to the kids and they get to sing a song and they get to do this and they get to do that. It's we brush your teeth, we say a prayer, 
you're in bed. Good night. See you in the morning. And you cannot come out of this room unless you're throwing up or bleeding (laughs) until the next morning when your green light timer turns green at 7 a.m., which means in the evening, still, and I always have time in the evenings where we could spend together if we don't have something else going on. Um, So those are – it was hard to do that because you had to set – set it straight right you had to like train the children to do that but if you're adamant if you're on the same page if you're consistent like children even at a even at the age of two can stay in their room until their timer turns green um for a quiet time and for the bedtime routine and so i think that was one tool that really helped us to make Mm -hmm. sure that we continued to make each other a priority and then being willing to pay a sitter you know we have family here which is such a blessing but we have to use them often for like church things because we have a young church. And so we do a lot of events where like kids don't aren't really supposed to come. And so we've had to pay for a sitter and it's worth every penny. So for date nights and stuff, like we often pay a sitter and and it's worth it. It's worth carving out that money in our budget and saying no to other things so that we can say yes to each other. Yeah. I think it's so good. And that you, that that's, you gave a good answer and you guys have done a really good job of it. And I think, and you don't feel guilty that you're not giving your kids everything. And I think sometimes, you know, if someone's listening to this and thinking, Oh, I could never do that. First, you're modeling marriage for your kids. And if you, I wanted my kids to have conversations with their spouse, to make that a priority for them to see uh, them praying together, the things that, that you are modeling for your kids and they need to know that. Plus, your kids are going to leave. And if you let your marriage go for 18, if you had two kids, you know, for 25 years, it's going to take a lot to get it back. And so yeah. you've got to continue to do that. Plus, you're healthier. Your marriage is healthier. You're better parents when your marriage is healthier. All those things go hand in hand. And so, you know, if, if that's hard for you, take a hard look at it. Pray about it. Are there some things? Because I have so many people that say, I suggest that they go have time together if the kids go to bed. Well, they go through that two-hour de- ordeal of getting their kids to bed. So no, they don't, but they, you can change that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it may be a struggle if you've certainly let your kids, you know, kind of run that. And one more story. Oh, okay, one more story. Uh, this is your fifth glass of water, but I'll go get it. You know, those kind of things. You know, you've just kind of, they've pushed the, and those are kids. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with what they've done. They're just pushing the boundaries. See what they can get. And so you just close those boundaries. So you can have, maybe that gives you that 30 minutes or an hour that you were spending trying to get the kids to sleep that you can spend with each other. Yeah, definitely. And and to me, I view it as a gift to the children to keep yes. our marriage good. Like I feel like one of the best gifts you can give your kids is a health, having a healthy marriage. And also I think of, you know, I have divorced parents. They get to see us less because we divide time amongst them. And so, I mean, think of the long haul of like, yeah, you're sending your kid to their room for an hour every day um, for quiet quiet time. So you're missing out on time with them on on the weekend so that you can spend time together. But if you guys – what's the alternative? If you – have a miserable marriage or if you end up getting divorced well that means you're only going to see your kids every other christmas you're not going to get them in the christmas when they're in college because they have to go to dad's house and then mom's house and what is what does that look like and so and i think it's good for the children like it's good for their independent play i mean there's no screen there's no screens in their bedroom so they just imagine and play for a whole hour and my kids have done really well with it. They've thrived. I don't feel bad about it at all. I think it's really good for them. I think it's it's good for their little brains and for them to be independent. I agree. I agree. And and I think I think it lets the kids be creative. Kids, all kids are creative, and if we throw something in front of them, and I'm not getting down on people that use screens and stuff, mm-hmm. but I think you have to you have to monitor that. But give them time to be creative. This has nothing to do with persevering your marriage, but this has been good. Yeah, that was, <laughs> we kind of got on a tangent there. It's fun. Well, getting back to persevering, Dr. Kim, can you give us some motivation for doing this? Why is it worth it to persevere in having an awesome marriage? I think you're going to, I mean, you got married for a reason. You didn't get married to to fight or to go separate ways for 50 years or things like that. God designed marriage uh, for so many things that he teaches us through marriage relationship. So when you persevere and are focusing on having the marriage God designed for you, and don't forget that part. You have a, a unique design for your marriage. Each of you are unique. No one will ever have a marriage like the two of you. And so, yes, there's a lot of things that God has for every marriage, but he has some unique things for the two of you, and you don't want to miss out on that. And so per- persevering every day, doing the things, something every day that's going to enhance your marriage, it's worth it because you're going to reap the benefits. You're going to reap incredible benefits if you continue to do that. Yeah. 
good. That's good. Yeah, and I'd say, you know, the opposite is pretty motivating too, right? What's the alternative? Um, yeah. And so being miserable in your marriage or going through a divorce, that's that's awful. It's Both horrible. of those things are awful. Being in a miserable marriage affects your everyday life. Um, getting divorced is is a very traumatic and expensive and draining experience. Um, well, being happily married is the alternative to both of those things. And so I, I'd say that's worth all the work in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Are you ready to bring more fun, joy, and wisdom to your marriage? This year, we put on our second annual online marriage retreat. This retreat has already launched, but because it's online, you haven't missed a thing. You can sign up today and enjoy this retreat. You can have a great time experiencing retreating with your spouse in the comfort of your own home. You get to watch all the sessions at your own pace from your own home, and you'll have access to everything for a full year. So there's no crazy timeline that you have to adhere to. This year, our theme is building a life-giving marriage. We have 15 awesome speakers lined up like Demario and Julia Tucker from Transformation Church, Jimmy and Irene Rollins from We Are Union Church, Jim Burns from Homeward.com, our good friend Jay Parker from Hot Holy and Humorous, and Earl and Onika McLennan from Shoreline City Church. And of course, Dr. Kim is speaking, just to name a few of the great speakers we have lined up. One of my favorite parts about this retreat is really the flexibility of how you can do it. You can do this retreat with just the two of you, or you can invite a few married friends to do it with you. You can make a full weekend of retreating, or you can do a couple of sessions each date night for the next couple of months. Invest in your marriage with a retreat that will bring fresh vision, fun, connection, and practical advice to help you have a life-giving marriage. Because here's the thing. When your marriage is unhealthy, it drains your energy and it darkens other areas of your life. When it's healthy, your marriage can not only be fun, but life-giving. It can bring energy and joy to your life. So register for our new online marriage retreat today. You can register for just $49, but of course, you know, since you're our friend, we have a discount code for you. You can get 10% off that price with the code AWESOMEMARRIAGE10. Learn more at the link in our show notes or check it out at AWESOMEMARRIAGE.COM. Do you want to have a fun and sexy sex life with your spouse? Do you want to get back to flirting and enjoy making your spouse feel wanted? Well, we want to make that super easy for you. We have created a new resource, the 42 Sexy Notes for Your Spouse. This fun printable has 42 sexy and punny notes that are fun and flirty. All you have to do is print and cut them out and then leave them for your sweetie. It'll be sure to make them feel loved and wanted. Don't stop flirting with your spouse. Amp up the flirting with this resource today. You can get this 42 sexy notes for your spouse resource with a donation of any amount made to the Ministry of Awesome Marriage at the link to the specific giving page in our show notes. Whatever you can give helps make the ministry happen. So click on over there in our show notes to grab this resource, or you can always find our resources at awesomemarriage.com. Once you donate, you'll be emailed the PDF immediately in your receipt email. When you give to Awesome Marriage, you are helping save families and strengthen marriages. Thank you for impacting couples. If you are really ready to level up your marriage, can I suggest becoming a Marriage Changer member? We create a new digital resource every month. If you want to get these resources each and every month delivered straight to your inbox, be sure to sign up to become a Marriage Changer member because then you get these resources as well as other sweet benefits like our Awesome Marriage t-shirts and exclusive video content of marriage tips every month from Dr. Kim and Nancy. It's a great way to connect with Dr. Kim and Nancy and grow in your marriage as you learn from them. You can sign up for your Marriage Changer membership today at our website at awesomemarriage.com. When you do that, you'll get this month's resource, the 42 Sexy Notes for Your Spouse, as well as all other resources moving forward. Well, is having an awesome marriage always going to be a lot of work or does it get easier with time, Dr. Kim? I think if you're both really working at, I think it does begin to get easier. Maybe not the effort part of it, but you're both reaping the rewards of your efforts. And so I think that's where 
I don't look at it as work maybe in the same way that I did at one point in our marriage. You know, at one point it's like, we've got to do this if we're going to have anything close to the marriage that, that God wants us to have. And so it was, but now it, it comes easier. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't fall off a little bit, but it's easier to serve her today than it was in the early years of our marriage. Um, and especially when we get to the point where here where our kids are out of the home and we have grandkids that don't live with us, uh, there's less distractions. And, you know, we really have a chance to really reap the benefits now of our work. And I think that's what you want. You want to work on that. You want to build. You want to grow. You learn more about each other. And then when that last child leaves home, you think, wow, now we're going to really have more time together because we don't have to be home for dinner. We don't have to help with homework. We don't have to drive carpool. All those things that you won't believe how much time that gives you. It's just amazing. Even if your kids are driving, you know, most, most of them are when they leave, it still gives you a lot of time. And so then you've really, you've laid a foundation to really uh, continue to reap those benefits uh, that you, that you want in your marriage relationship. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, in my experience, it definitely gets easier um, because it becomes habit. So Dylan and I have yes. been ma- married for 10 years. And so when conflict comes up, we handle it quicker with less damage um, and a lot easier. But the key is that we can't stop investing in our marriage. So it's yeah. not necessarily complicated or hard things that we have to do to have an awesome marriage. Um, it, it can be very simple things that have just become a habit. The problem is making sure you don't slip out of the habit of these important, simple, but important things. Um so, for instance, simple things like connecting every day, those touch points that we talk about a lot here at Awesome Marriage, simple things like date nights. Those aren't hard, right, in, in, in themselves. It's just it can be hard when the whole world is coming at your schedule and coming at your calendar and you have to say, no, 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 yeah. we're going to make this a priority. So that yeah. part can be hard. But actually going on a date night, it's a pretty simple thing. Um, and then praying together and worshiping together again. It's, it's a simple thing. It's just a matter of building the habit. And then it's it's easy to pray together every night. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be a big prayer. It could be as simple as we're going to take two minutes to pray together every night. Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. It is. And it's just, I think what you said is we talk a lot about habits. And so do it consistently enough. And I think, too, if you if you skip one of those things for a day or two, you know, get back on track. And, you know, either one of you say, hey, we, we have not prayed for three nights. Let's mm-hmm. pray together. You know, whatever it is, work together at that. And I think and just build those habits in, because really, if we don't pray together in the evening, you know, I, I you know, if we're doing some other things and we haven't prayed yet, I just start feeling funny because it's like something's missing. It's become an important part of my life. And so I look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, you mentioned um, like the benefits of it, Dr. Cam. And I think, you know, it reminds me of, you know, you reap what you sow, you reap later than what you sow, and you reap more than what you sow. And so I, I guess one thing that's really motivating to me is Dr. Kim and Nancy. So like, let's all look at Dr. Kim and Nancy. You know, they have worked hard for so long and they've invested in their marriage for so long. And now they're reaping the benefits of 51 years of being happily married. Like this matters. This like they are relationship goals. And so what does it look like to do that? It looks like don't don't neglect these things. Make your marriage a top priority by making sure it's on your calendar, in your budget, in your thoughts and in your prayers and doing these simple habits. And when you get off ha- track with a habit put it back where it belongs get back on track yeah and i think and and nancy and i we've talked about but we i was so blessed i had two sets of grandparents that were married over 50 years each my parents were married over 55 years and so i saw the benefits up close of perseverance because i would say my grandparents both set the grandparents and obviously my parents were kind of the inspiration for awesome marriage but they all had really good marriages they just had you could just see it in the way they connected and treated each other and had fun together mm-hmm. that's awesome and i think again that's motivation for our children, you know, like the legacy there of just like, you know, this is why you got to make your marriage a priority and not have a child centered marriage is for your kids. And so your kids can say what Dr. Kim is saying about you guys. And maybe that's not your story. Maybe you you do come from a divorced family or parents who have a terrible marriage or a miserable marriage or an average marriage, but turn it around. Like you can be the person who turns things around and be the legacy for your kids and your grandkids and your great grandkids to say, this was the motivation for why we have an awesome marriage. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I know that's why I say that when I talk about my parents and grandparents, I say I was blessed because that is not the usual case. I know that. But I tell couples a lot of times, I say, okay, what was, trying to find what was good in your parents' marriage? Maybe they divorced, blah, blah, blah. Okay, pick whatever that is. And, and then, okay, all this other stuff we're going to leave behind and, and we'll take the good. 
And that helps you kind of refocus on your parents' marriage too and realize there was some good in there. I think there's always some good in most most Absolutely. situations. You can find some good in it. And so bring those things forward and talk about it. And, and if you both agree, implement those in your marriage. But take all that junk and leave it behind. Yeah, that's good. Well, Dr. Kim, if you had to pick just three things for couples to do to keep their marriage awesome, what would they be? Probably know the first one. Pray together. You know, and I think for so many reasons, it connects us, but God has answers. We have seen that throughout our marriage when we would not pray about something and we'd be struggling with something and or how do we do this or what do we do? And we pray about it and it's like, oh, why didn't we do that earlier? Because the, the answer, so, it's not like God spoke to us, but the answer is so clear all of a sudden. Uh, so praying together, set aside time together every day to connect. Make that almost something that you, that, that you just never take off your schedule. You may need to move it around with situations and stuff over your marriage, but do that. And then the last one is have fun together. I mean, I think sometimes we miss that, but marriage should be fun together. You should be laughing together. There's, I don't know, there's many things that bond Nancy and I together more than just laughing together. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then once you've done that or you have that private joke, you can just say one word and you're laughing again. So, so I would say that pray together, time together every day, and have fun together. Wow, I love that. That's awesome. Well, this has been a great conversation. I think it's been really inspiring for me. Um, I hope it helps other couples to persevere. Um, what final piece of advice do you have for our listeners today? Yeah, don't look at that word persevere as a negative word or hard word or anything. It's it just, it's a guideline to have what you really want in your marriage. And we know that anything worth having takes time and effort. And my gosh, there's everything else we invest in in life Beside, I'm talking about work and stuff like that those could end in a minute but your marriage you can invest in that and and as long as you guys are alive together you reap the benefits from it and you'll never regret saying how can I help you every day the rest of your married life or I love you or you know anything that's encouraging and helpful in your marriage you'll never regret that yeah, that is so good. Um, and I will shamelessly plug the one thing right here because it just is so in line with everything we've been talking about today. So Dr. Kim has this one thing content you can sign up via email and he gives you one practical thing that you can do for your marriage that day. He does it Monday through Friday, every single day. And we have just heard testimony after testimony, story after story of how this has turned marriages around. It has helped uh, make average marriages awesome. It has ke- kept people intentional and just helped people to persevere by thinking about their marriage and thinking about their marriage on a lot of different levels, a lot of different topics, and giving you just different ideas of how you can keep investing in your marriage. But they're all usually very like simple things that you could do mm-hmm. that day. So it's super practical. It's not this like overarching, like heady stuff that's going to be complicated to enforce. Um, and so I highly recommend you sign up for Dr. Kim's one thing content if you haven't already we'll have the link in our show notes or you can go to awesomemarriage.com slash one thing and if you feel like a daily thing is just way too much for you uh, one other option would be to become a marriage changer so a marriage changer you just get one email every single month with a digital resource for you to help invest in your marriage as well as some homework questions and a video an exclusive video from dr cam nancy on a certain marriage topic so that can kind of be like a once a month intensive, if you will, uh, for your marriage, if you're interested in becoming a marriage changer. And you can learn more about that on our website under the Get Involved tab. Well, this has been a great conversation. I hope you guys all keep persevering in building an awesome marriage. If you like the podcast, please take a moment to leave a rating and review. It is a real gift to Dr. Kim and I and to the Ministry of Awesome Marriage when you do that because it helps more couples find the show, which is what we want to do here at Awesome Marriage is help more couples. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can email us at info at awesomemarriage.com. We actually mean that. We will respond to your email. We're not just saying that. We love chatting with you. We love praying specifically for you. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. Have a great day and do something awesome for your marriage today. Thanks for listening to the Awesome Marriage Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Ministry of Awesome Marriage, our podcast producer, Lindsay Few, and with music by Noah Copeland. If you haven't signed up for Dr. Kemp's One Thing to Grow Your Marriage each day email yet, we encourage you to do so today at onethingmarriage.com. Marriage is hard and life is busy, which is why we need real practical reminders of ways to build an awesome marriage. Sign up today to get one practical thing you can do each day delivered straight to your inbox. Email not your thing? That's okay. You can also opt in for the same content via text at onethingmarriage.com. If you enjoyed this content, share the podcast with a friend.